in today's video, I'm working on my game's look and feel. I've already settled on the time period, which is 16th century England, but I'm still trying to pin down the exact date. When I'm trying to settle on an idea, I like to sketch, as it helps me collect my thoughts. Doing this also helps me understand the direction I want to go in. The sketch that I'm doing now is of Mary Stuart, or Mary Queen of Scots as what most people probably know her by. I can't quite make up my mind on who I want the central character to be in my campaign. Mary is of course one, but the other you could guess later on, when I'm working through the types of treasure I want my players to find. I'd be interested to hear what works for other people, so yeah, if you want to share how you sift through ideas, let me know in the comments below. Basing a game on an era of history I'm familiar with does make the plotting process a little easier, and when it comes to creating treasure items, there's a bigger foundation to work from. My original game was very different to this one. It was set in a secret lab and was based in the future, not the past. I couldn't get along with it though, so it's on pause now until I get back to it. I think it's good to follow your instincts. As much as I wanted to persevere with that game, it was becoming very hard work, and the ideas were not coming to me as easily as they did in the beginning. Normally, I see that as a sign that something isn't quite right, and it's time to go back to the drawing board. As you can see, my parchment has taken on a bit more of a pink appearance, instead of brown, but we're going to stick with it. Maybe it'll make for an interesting backstory. Anyway, in case you hadn't guessed already, this character is another queen, who was in fact married to Henry VIII and her name was Anne Boleyn. So if I take this route for my game, these are the treasures I will be using. At the top we have the Boleyn Falcon, which in this game is going to be an ornament or small statue. The falcon was basically a crest that I think represented her marriage to the king. Next is her pendant, which can actually be seen in one of the only remaining portraits of her. The tiara is something I've made up, but you can think of it as representing a crown. Next is a prayer book. These were very expensive in their time, especially if they were illustrated. And last of all is a jewel, or ruby, because why not? Next, I'm filling in a brief description of what each treasure is and its worth. Of course, because these are items belonging to a queen, they will hold significant value, which will make them all the more difficult to find. I am thinking of setting the game in the Tower of London or Hever Castle, which is where Anne Boleyn grew up. However, because the Tower of London is a real life dungeon, I think that could be better for the game. To age the parchment some more, I am distressing the writing with water. Perhaps someone tried to destroy it, or maybe it was stolen and got wet, as the thief carried it away into the night. At this point I do realise I've gone a bit overboard with the water, to the point where some of this writing is becoming unreadable. However, it can make a good prop. The worse the player's roll, the more destroyed the parchment is. That's the great thing about making something like this. It doesn't matter how tatty it gets, as you can just bake it into the storytelling. Once you've created your treasure items and have given them a value, you can format them however you like. If I still want to keep these items as my idea develops, I can make individual treasure cards that the players can use. To keep all of my ideas together, I'm going to keep a game planning journal of sorts. First, I'm going to stick down my pink parchment of treasure so I can see what I've created so far. On the other side goes the portrait of Mary Queen of Scots. I still want to keep her in this journal, as later on, I can create a different one shot based on her too. Here, I'm just tidying up the lettering for my journal, while also practicing the style of new font. I lost my white felt tip pen so I'm using a white blending pencil. To be honest, I think I prefer how it looks. Now is also a good time to think about the type of dungeon I want to create. So I've settled on the Tower of London, in particular the White Tower, which is the main fortress. I know Anne Boleyn stayed in the Queen's house during her time there, but it was hard to find its exact layout. The White Tower on the other hand has a floor plan I can base my dungeon on. As I'm only creating a one shot for now, I'm only focusing on one floor. Once I've got everything stuck down on the next page, I'm going to sketch the initial idea for my map. Here, I'm just drawing directly onto the paper 
by creating one centimetre by one centimetre squares. This was actually a lot easier than me buying squared paper and also means I get the full use out of my sketchbook. As I'm drawing directly onto this page, I want to spray the pencil grid lines so when I make a mistake, I can rub some of my sketch out without taking away the squares. I just use hairspray, but there are proper fixing sprays you can get to stop things like pencil and charcoal sketches from smudging. These are some printouts of the floor plan from the White Tower. I think I'm going to focus more on the ground floor as it has more rooms and goes down to a cellar. If I wanted to expand this game or run it over several sessions, I could try to include some of the other floors too. I sketched a bit of the map out in pencil so I could find my bearings a bit with it, but I'll use a fine liner to add more detail. I've mostly aligned my map with the general shape of the floor plan, but I've made some rooms bigger than others. I've also used a bit of artistic license when it comes to things like stair and gate placement. I quite enjoy drawing maps as I can create all sorts of little doodles. I think of sketching in some little shrubs and trees to create a courtyard in the south of the tower. I'm still working on what each room will contain and of course the encounters. I might do some further reading on the White Tower to see if I can include some real life examples of different objects and decorations. At the moment I want to fit this game on a page and create an additional handout that the GM can use to add a bit of history to their storytelling. I like games that give me the freedom to create my own world around the one provided and I think this is what I want to do with this game. But let me know what you think, I imagine most people like an even split some prefer in slightly more prescriptive or free direction than others. I think I lead towards having less direction and preferring the freedom to put my own creative input on things. What do you think of my map so far? I'm just labelling up the different rooms and figuring out what scale I should make it. I was going to make one square equal to five feet, but looking back on it, I think for this first attempt, I shall make each square 10 feet instead. There were some very interesting rooms in the White Tower. The Armours is the first room, which then goes down to a cellar. Towards the back we have the crypt and prison. From the floor plan, I presume the crypt was on the ground floor, but it could be next to the cellar too. In this map though, I've put in some stairs that take players from the cellar back up to the ground floor, which is where I'm placing the crypt. I also deliberately elongated the stairs between each room to make the transition between them more difficult. It's a tower after all, and we can't have players roaming around it quickly. As you can see, my quick attempt at this map is nearly complete. I'm tempted to add a few more flourishes to the outside and maybe build up the courtyard some more. But the next job really is to research who and what will be going in these rooms. I also quite like the idea of putting something in those dingy stairwells. Who knows who could be hiding in them, or the traps that lay in store for unwelcome guests.